Before jumping into today's video, I did want to let you guys know that my next vintage drop number two is going to be this Sunday, the 26th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So save the date, set your alarms. It's going to be a good one. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's kind of weird not having a mantle. I'm so used to putting my camera right on the mantle, but we don't have one anymore. We are in the living room again this week. I actually feel like we're gonna be making a lot of progress. I'm standing on my tippy toes at the moment, by the way. I'm actually gonna pick that up and just chat with you guys. So I feel like we are gonna be making so much progress in the next couple of videos in the living room because we're at the point now where we can make big changes, like starting to install the bookcases, having the doors installed, and also painting this space. So I went ahead and went to Farrow and Ball yesterday and got two different paint color options that I want to try out. I got the little paint pot as opposed to the little painted sheets because I wanted to create larger swatches. So I got the colors Old White and String, which String is actually color that I'm considering for the breakfast nook. I have one of these really large boards here that I'm just going to put the color on. That way I can walk it around the room and see it at different angles. I have my first coat of old white. Now we're gonna try the second color, which is string. Now this color is kind of the color that I'm wanting the room to look like in the end, but I have to account for the amber stained glass, which is going to shift the color quite a bit. So I just wanted to more so see this one in a large swatch. These are our two color options. This first one here, is old white from Fair and Ball. And as you can see, now this is going over the top of like a pinkish toned wall. This color underneath is kind of pinkish. And so this is gonna come off a little bit more green. However, it's supposed to be kind of like a very aged white that has just a tint of green to it. So I do think once this is on all the walls and you don't see any of this original color anywhere, it's not gonna pull as green like as this is looking. And then our next color is string, which is definitely a little yellowy. It kind of is like a butter yellow color, and this is what that one looks like next to it. You guys know me in paint colors. It's always a tricky decision. I love putting the swatches on these boards because you're able to move them around the room. You can see them in different areas, different lightings, different times of day. And also, I wanted to see the swatch in multiple rooms because I think I want to use this one in the breakfast nook. And I'm thinking... I'm gonna go for this color in the living room. I'm just gonna have to trust that once it's on all the walls, it's just gonna feel like an old white. Crossing our fingers. I have yet to share with you guys the stove. The stove for the kitchen came in last week. I actually did a short on the channel, but it barely showed the stove. So let me head into the kitchen. I wanna share with you guys what the new stove looks like. Look how great it looks. I just could not be happier. Like this view right here is everything I wanted it to be. It just looks so great. And it's so nice to see like the final space with this range here because this was an open spot for like five months. Then we had to put the old range back in because this one was back ordered for a little bit. And then it finally came um, and I love it. This is the Ilvi range and it's stainless steel and brass. It's so, so stunning. And I knew in this kitchen, I wanted to use mixed metals as a design element. So I actually used stainless steel, brass and copper throughout the entire kitchen like you'll see the different metals even some black iron as well to kind of bring in the Spanish vibe as well but I really really love the oven I actually got it on Wayfair if you guys are curious they have so many incredible appliances I couldn't believe that they had it on their site so if you're interested check out Wayfair but I think it looks so nice it is the final piece of the kitchen and I feel like the kitchen is now complete I'm gonna make a quick AG1, which actually happens to be the sponsor of today's video. And if you guys have never heard of AG1, this is actually a really great nutritional drink that has 75 different ingredients to support your immunity. So it's something that I like to use kind of as like an additional just reassurance that I'm getting some of the daily nutrition that I'm actually needing because I am somebody that does not eat very well. I will say that I'm typically filming or editing, so I just order something. It has different vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and superfoods throughout so there's quite a bit in here to help support your immunity and I love taking this every day if you can start creating a ritual and kind of get into the habit of it you're gonna consistently do it so let's make one really quick then we're gonna give this a good shake It honestly tastes very, very good as well. It tastes like pineapple, like does not taste anything like what you might think it tastes like. 
If you are at all interested, you can actually head to athleticgreens.com slash lonefox. You're going to receive a year supply of their vitamin D3 plus five travel packs with your purchase if you make one. So definitely keep that in mind. You can use my link at the top of the description box below. But let's go ahead and get back to the living room because we have a lot to work on, but at least we have energy now. So the first plan of action in here is going to be the fireplace because as you guys saw, I've been letting this dry down for just about two days now so it's nice and cured. That way we can go through and sand off all of this like extreme texture and try to get somewhat of a similar texture here and there to what was originally there. Now this has been painted over multiple times. So let's get the sandpaper and get to shaping this mantle. So the main goal of sanding down the plaster is just to have the edges kind of flow into the original plaster that's already there. So the main areas that I'm focusing on are the edges and any kind of trowel marks that were created from actually traveling the material on. Um, I do want to keep a little bit of the texture though, that way it kind of has a similar look once it's fully painted, but we're going to be able to get an idea of that once we actually add a coat of primer. The coat of primer that you add or whatever paint you add over the area that you patch the mantle is really going to give you an idea of where you still need to add more plaster, where you need to sand down, where you need to take it away, and also where you might need to build up a little bit more texture as well to kind of get a fluid movement from the previous texture on the wall to the area that we just replastered. Oh, and yes, I am painting over the lime wash. It's just a little too gray. It didn't turn out the color I thought it was going to. Oh, so this wall is now primed, which I spent quite a bit of time firstly painting this one lime wash color, then a second, and now it's back to white. But I wanted to share with you the sconces. So these are the sconces that I found. I think I already shared them with you guys once before. These are gonna be going right here on the wall. And because of that, I'm actually going to need to patch this a little bit. I'm gonna to need to bring it in just a little bit on either side because only about two inches of the sconce covers the little box area. So I'm gonna use some drywall tape, put it on either side, add some plaster, and let that harden overnight so that way we can mount these once it's all painted. Look how cool these are if you have yet to see them. They are from a legit castle in Belgium. And in order to patch these a little bit, I'm going to be using two pieces of this drywall tape. This is like a thicker version of your traditional mesh tape, and I'm putting it on either side, and you can see that we still have an opening in the center for our wires. Then I'm putting over the top of it some joint compound, and I did two layers of this and let it dry in between. That way it's nice and sturdy, and this is just going to give us more of a finished off wall section, which we can paint into the original wall, and it's gonna look a lot cleaner once we apply the sconce. Justin has been working on this window pretty much all day. If you guys remember, I did these two windows over here, that one there, and then this one. Justin was like, I'll take care of this one. So he has been stripping it, but it's quite a bit of work. I have our paint. 
tasted it. I'm also a little nervous because I did go with the off-white or the old white color and I got three gallons from Pharaoh and Ball. And if you guys know anything about Pharaoh and Ball, this gallon of paint costs a hundred and how much? 150. Well, some uh, of them are 125, some are 150. 100 and around 30 dollars essentially for this gallon of paint i really wanted to use this as like an experiment because i see people using pharaoh and ball paint all the time and i wanted to test it out i've never ever tried it so i figured you know what let's do it in the main living room i did go ahead and reprime the lime wash wall yesterday that's why this one's looking yellow this one's looking white but we have a nice light base on all the walls so we can start with our painting I also wanted to point out that on camera, this new color kind of looks like the original yellow, but if you could see, I actually swatched some of the new color over the top of the original yellow, and it's quite a bit darker. Just finished painting this little bookshelf insert here, and the color is perfect. It is exactly what I was wanting it to be. It does not feel green at all on the wall, which I was a little bit scared about in swatch form because it kind of was leaning very kind of sagey, almost minty in a sense. And also I will say the paint's great. Um, I mean, I don't notice much difference in like a normal paint. The color's good. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. The sky is so pretty right now. I wonder if you're pretty eyes. I need a good love I wonder if you're ever gonna be it In a couple weeks I could drive away And you could find another victim It's not your fault I feel this way Senseless With no direction If, you, if you've never used one of these pull extenders on your roller it is such a lifesaver, you guys. It truly makes it so much easier to paint the walls. I mean, I have this right behind me, but look at how like quick you could just go along. And it doesn't like break your arm either. You can even do really long strides all the way up. This town is a lot of things. I guess you don't, it lets you be. I need to get up, but I can't find a ticket to leave. In a couple weeks, I could drive away, and you could find another victim. It's not your fault to feel this way, senseless, with no direction. In a couple years. And a little more gray We'll stop dreaming about each other It's no one's fault We'll find a way To get senseless For one on earth Yeah, we'll get senseless For each other We're doing something kind of fun, kind of scary at the moment. So I am going to turn on the fireplace. 
Now, I ended up paying quite a bit of money when I bought this house to have the fireplaces checked, they had the chimneys relined actually, and I have yet to turn them on. And I just watched a YouTube video on how to do that because I've never actually lit a gas fireplace before. What if the house goes up in flames? I mean, at least you didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> so we don't have a barbecue lighter, so I'm just gonna use this long taper candle and hope for the best. It kind of feels like a wand. Just a candle. Okay, Justin, I'm scared. Okay. What do I, I do? do? Half a turn. Yeah. I'm supposed to already be holding it in there, actually, though. Half a turn counterclockwise. Yeah. Is, am I gonna blow up? That's one full turn. Oh! It's lighting up! Ah! Do we have fire? <gasps> we have fire! Oh my gosh, it's so cute! I love it! I've always wanted to turn that on. And that's supposed to look like embers. We made fire. Look at the cozy vibes in here. Justin is doing some edging up there. He's so good at doing like the really clean lines. We did the fireplace this morning and the color looks so good. I love, love, love it. It's perfect. It's exactly what I was going for. I feel like it almost looks like kind of white on camera or just like a very, very light color. But if I was to go up, for example, the Starbucks bag is white. You can really see, you know, how different of a tone that is. Welcome to my little studio space. Now, if you remember, this actually used to be a periwinkle color, nice and bright. And Justin's right here, by the way. He's like hiding in the corner. There he is. <laughs> we are shooting the vintage today for the vintage shop, which is why there's stuff all over the place. It's actually one of my favorite days doing this. I was like, gonna send Justin a call sheet yesterday, even though it was just me and him shooting this. I was like, I'm gonna send a call sheet with craft services, even though it's just Uber Eats and me taking the photos. It's Wednesday today, and this video is actually going up tomorrow morning because I'm going to the Taylor Swift concert, you guys, on Friday. I'm so, so excited. I'm going to the one in Vegas, though, so I actually have to leave on Friday morning. So I wasn't able to paint as much as I actually wanted to in this video, but I did want to let you guys know that the vintage drop is this upcoming Sunday, so definitely save that date. It is March 26th at 10 a.m. I also thought it would be fun to share with you guys a little sneak peek of some of the items before they go up. Check this out. Look at that still life. Oh my gosh, I found this at my parents' house when I was in Arizona. A lovely eggplant still life. I love the colors in this one and the frame is really pretty. I love this. I almost had to keep it for myself. This really pretty carved marble bowl. There's a bunch of really great copper items because I know you guys love the copper pieces that I feature in my kitchen. So I've been trying to find like really unique copper pieces. This box is absolutely incredible. It is hand carved and it has the most stunning leaves on it. And the front actually has this lock mechanism and it's completely carved into the box. So someone fully carved this. I think that is so cool and it locks the box when you push it. This really cool vintage checkerboard. This item is probably one of the most expensive in the drop, but you guys, I found this incredible oil painting. The colors are unreal. The frame is unreal and it's from 1899 signed, like from Dinah. Dinah painted this and she blew her horn right after. 